Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure Infrastructure Update. It is the 18th of October and a few new things around Azure this week. But first, as always, if this is useful, please go ahead and give this video a like, subscribe, comment and share. So before we get going, new videos this week, part six of the Azure Masterclass was uploaded. This was all about core networking, all about the virtual networks, um, connectivity, things we can do within the virtual network. And then a super quick video, just thinking about creating a website in Azure with just static content in 60 seconds, just using a storage account. So kind of went in and showed how we can do that. So on the compute side, app service private endpoints have gone GA. So this is the idea that now, like so many other services, I now have that ability to actually project an endpoint into my virtual network that represents a particular service. So in this case, it's web app. When I project that private endpoint, it then cuts off the public access to that service. I do have to have the, I think it's the isolated premium v2, v3, or the functions elastic premium SKU to actually use the private endpoint. It does not work with deployment slots. So I can't have like a private endpoint to a staging deployment slot, for example. So it's not going to leverage that. Um, remember private endpoints are about, in this case, this is letting me from my VNet talk to my web app or my function. And it works with Windows, Linux, containerized or not. If I want the app service to talk to things in my virtual network, well, that's why I have to use the VNet integration. Most commonly, that's kind of that delegated subnet. So the private endpoint is only about me being in my VNet talking to my web app, but that is now GA. Also, app service plans now have in preview JBoss support. So this is all about, I have kind of my Java enterprise applications and JBoss provides that enterprise application platform. Previously in app service plans, we had Wildfly, which is more of a kind of dev test solution that's gone away. This is kind of that production in partnership with Red Hat solution. So this is what I was at to use to host Java kind of applications now, if I want to use that JBoss platform. So that's in preview for app service plans. On storage, um, now we have block blob point in time restore. So this is now GA. So this gives me that ability to essentially go back to a specific point in time for whatever I select, for whatever blobs I want to select. So we can see this. So if I quickly jump over. So here, if we're looking at our storage account, the first thing you're going to actually do is within data protection. So here I'm in my data protection. What you're going to do is go on and turn on point in time restore for containers. And you're going to set a number of days. So this is how many days back I could actually go. Now, by turning this on, it's also going to turn on all of the other features. So soft delete. So if I delete saying it doesn't really delete it for a period of time, it's going to turn on versioning. So now I can actually, every time I change the blob, well, it, it has the previous versions as well. It works out the delta change. And it now turns on that blob change feed so I know well, when things change. For example, the soft delete, it has to be a time greater than what my point in time restore needs to be. So if my here my point in time restore is six days, my soft delete is seven days. So essentially using all of these things together is going to let me roll back. Then I can essentially just go to a particular container. I can now go to whatever I want. I would select, let's say, images. And here I can do restore containers. Now I could do all or just selected. And by default, it's kind of putting in the range of blobs. So anything in the images container to images dash zero. 
Um, it doesn't include what it's going to. This is so I can do a span of objects. I could be more specific. So I might just say, hey, actually in images, for example, um, only um, image one, two images, I don't know, image five. So now it would only include any images that started with IMG one or two, three, four, but wouldn't include five. So I could be more granular in what I want to roll back. Now I would say, yes, I want to proceed. And it would now roll back to whatever point in time I'm actually putting up here in the top in this roll back to window. So this is this new kind of capability now to actually go ahead and let me go and roll back my blocks to previous point in times. So uh, a nice feature. We now have snapshots for ADLS Gen 2. Again, an ability to take a point in time view now with Data Lake. And I've kind of brought up this link. And the reason is over the last few weeks, we've seen more and more features now available for Data Lake. Because obviously Data Lake Gen 2 sits on top of Block Blob. So it makes sense, things that Block Blob can do, well, it will start being available to Data Lake Gen 2 as well. So if we actually select this link, it's going to open up this page. And if we go ahead and look at this page in a bit more detail, it's going through and actually showing us, well, here are the features and if it's supported or not. So these are all of the features that I have in Blob Storage and show me, is it in Data Lake Storage Gen 2 or not? So here we could see, well, basic things like tiers, hot access tier, call access tier. Yep, they're, they're all generally available, events, metrics, all good. Then it tells you if it's in block blob storage, i.e. premium performance tier. As you scroll down, then you can start to see other features. So here we see snapshots, static websites, immutable, right, once read many container soft delete and then it goes into things that are not yet supported so this is just a really nice little document to really help me see hey I'm using data lake what features yes or no are actually supported the miscellaneous um, Azure monitor log analytics now has a data export capability I can think about ordinarily I have kind of my log analytics workspace and I have some resource that sends data into that log analytics workspace. So what this new feature lets me do is actually as it's going into here, well, for certain tables, log analytics is made up of lots of tables. I can take a feed and that feed can go to blob, so you append blobs, and it can go to event hub. Remember event hub is all around that publish subscribe. So the blob, these append blobs would be great for just kind of long term storage of the data. Hey, I want to keep it for a really long time as cheaply as possible. Event hub would be great for maybe there's another sim system, there's something else that I want to get and send into this other system. With Blob, um, this fires off kind of once an hour. It's going to go and populate. This is basically real time for that event hub. Now you may kind of wonder, okay, so from Log Analytics, I can now at a table level, so everything in that table, I can't filter it. If I want to filter, I'd use a different solution. Maybe I'd write some kind of function, um, a logic app that runs a query and does the export for me. So this will take everything in the table I specify and send it to whatever combination I want. Now you might say, why am I bothering with that? I know that for Azure resources, I have kind of diagnostic settings. 
And those diagnostic settings let me say, hey, you can go to Log Analytics Workspace, you can go to Blob, you can go to Event Hub. So why don't I just kind of send it from here? And for some things that might be the right solution. I can use, for example, Azure Policy to configure the diagnostic settings on my resources to send to whatever my targets are. But some sources can only send to Log Analytics Workspace. I can't configure them to go to a storage account or event hub. If I think of things like the Log Analytics agent, well, that's only going to send to Log Analytics. So now with this solution, hey, I, I can take the table I care about from whatever sources are sending to it and send it somewhere else. Additionally, now on the resources, I might say, hey, I just want to configure Log Analytics. And now I can centrally say, we'll take the things I care about and send it to other locations. Uh, App Insights has kind of a continuous export feature. Well, now App Insights can actually send data to Log Analytics. Now I could export and send that to other locations. And also Log Analytics has a two year maximum retention. If I want to keep it for longer than that, well, maybe I'll go and send it to Blob uh, and keep it for maybe some five years, maybe I have some regulatory requirement. So this is the kind of a, a nice solution to really let me go ahead and do all of those different things. So it's there, it doesn't cost any extra money. It's only for the supported tables. So it's not every single table supports that. However, um, if you actually look at the tables it does support, so it actually opens, let's try that again. There we go. If we actually go and look at this in detail, this is kind of listing all the supported tables that I can actually use for this continuous, um, these kind of data export. And it really is pretty much every table that we would generally care about. I now have the ability to use this Azure Monitor export capability to go and actually get the data I want to Event Hub and to Storage Account. And now also we have some new built-in sample alert queries as a separate topic in Log Analytics. So I want to create my own queries off of some Log Analytics data. Now when I'm doing that, I can actually select this new alert topic to actually make it easier for me to see, well, what could I actually use as part of that? So if we jump over to, and let's look at a VM, so over here in this subscription, if I just go and pick one of my virtual machines, I can say, let's look at my logs. And if we actually go and see here, for example, I've got sort of queries here. And now I have this topic option. When I go to my topics, now we have alerts. So this will actually show me some nice alert based queries that I could use, for example, track VM availability. If I click run, it will show me kind of the availability of my virtual machine. And then from this, hey, uh, I might now actually go and create some alerts um, all around this data. So it, it's basically just kind of a nice way for us to go and find those various things um, in our Log Analytics workspace, Azure Monitor Logs. And that's it. So I hope this was useful. And um, as always, if there's questions, please kind of drop it below and I'll do my best to answer them. But until next week, take care.